Hi, how are you doing? My name is Ben and together with MP and an amazing team, we have been bringing this boat to life in the past three and a bit years. We are very, very close now to launching. So we are posting one video every single day. If you don't know that yet, you can go back, catch up on what we've been doing. We have had a lot of rain lately and I think today is the first day of non-rain, of, uh, of sun that's called, non-rain. We've got Luik over here, he's going to be with me for today and see if we can get some stuff done. This morning was a little bit lazy, well actually it was the opposite of lazy, we went for a surf just to get some exercise in and do something that wasn't boat building. We had a big meal, a little nap and then now we're at the boat to go and do some building. The last thing I managed to do on the boat was put those two chain plates on with Nico's help also. I was just about to plug all those holes when it started raining. No, it didn't start raining, it would never stop raining. So what I'm going to do next is, instead of moving over to the chain plates on the other side, I think I'm going to work over to the anchor. Like, we have the windlass, but we've got all the chain and the anchors down here, and we want to start bringing them up. So that's what I'm going to work on next. Once that's done, I can go to the chain plates on the other side. Chronologically, that might not make so much sense, but I think it's fun for us to switch things up a bit, and for you guys to also not always see the same content. So let's get this done with. You can see we have these one, two, three, and four screws in here. Also, what you can see is the nice kind of finishing. We managed to do the seeker flex. I'm super happy with that. These are just the ones that I'm gonna be plugging now. I've, uh, I started, so it should be quite fast. Put this piece of wood here. I'm gonna plug it with some wood glue, cut it off, and then plug sand, plug another one, and so on. I thought I'd just take this small moment to show you how to make a plug for a boat. Now, of course, there are different ways of making plugs. You all might have your way of making plugs. I'm just gonna show you how we make the plugs here at the shipyard. As you can see, we've got a lot of wood left over and we don't have a drill press. And the quickest way to do it, and also we've got so many plugs to do. So first thing, you always see me wearing protective gear. The first thing you're gonna see me do is put my usual protective gear on. Your plank's always gonna be like this, right? Let's say this is your plank. You want to take the plank and imitate it and ideally get a drill press and drill some plugs out across here. You know what I mean? So that the grain can even follow the wood that you've drilled, except we do it a lot quicker. Firstly, we get a really thick grit, a hard grit sandpaper and you want to turn this rectangle here into a square first, or at least a kind of a circle. So all I'm going to do is just like at the scouts, when you're sharpening a, a spear or whatever you're doing, you go along until it kind of makes a, a circle, kind of. No time because I have a I think it's 26 grit uh, disc on this grinder. If you want another grinder, GWS850. We've had it for about three years and it still works. As it was a rectangle, you can see it's not a perfect circle, it's more like an oval. So now I know I'm going to have to take off that end and the is end to make it round. That's all we do. Loads of mosquitoes. Now you can see that you could call that a circle. However, when you're going to plug it in, you're going to be able to see all those little flat areas once you've hammered it and it won't look as nice. So ideally, to get to this phase, you'd leave it a slightly bit thicker, a bit thicker. And then you go to this slightly more technical part. I love how I'm calling this way of doing it technical. It's like totally the opposite. But to get this round, it is slightly more technical. When you turn the grinder on, you're gonna see it turns counterclockwise. So if you start holding your plug this way, it's probably just gonna catch and it might shoot back to so hold it on the right side. And all I'm gonna do is hold it against it. If you like the size of this tip, 
try not to touch that tip anymore and get all the rest the same size as that tip and just start turning, turning and turning. And that's actually it. What I would do now is you, you want to put it in, see if it fits. You never want to hammer too hard because if you hammer hard, you might split the wood that you're actually putting the plug in. So this is now nice and smooth. It's not got any of those stripes in anymore. One more thing that you could do is just take the tip. So it looks a bit like So it looks a bit like that and then it just gets that first nudge. I don't know if this is going to help anyone, but you saw how fast this is. You can literally put some glue on or some epoxy, hammer it in, cut it off. And this could probably, just like the stays we've got now, the chain plates, we can probably make, what, 20 plugs out of this in no time whatsoever. So I just wanted to share this with you guys, if you use it or not, whatever. Uh, I like this way of doing it. Very fast, you can use any type of wood. And just remember, this came out of a piece of rectangular scrap wood. There we go. Or you can do it like Zeka does, and he just gets an old broomstick, and he uses that as a plug. Want to see what? Oh, there's a boat here called Capitão Gato. And I think, you remember Clayton and William who worked with us, they carved out more than 200 of these plywood cats with a jigsaw and uh, they go along a pirate ship along the side. Just imagine 200 and something of these, trace them with a pencil and a jigsaw. Anyway, I'm getting carried away, procrastinating. Let's go and uh, finish this boat. When the anchor gets lifted it sits on that piece over there so we did it with, with Nezo a really long time ago and I remember we had to add it from the outside but we had all the scaffolding for that today we don't have the scaffolding but we'll have to do it anyway so let's go and figure this out quickly It was a very long time ago that we had installed that uh, anchor support and I think between installing it the first time or at least making that hole and then now we had fed the inside of that hole once to make it nice and smooth and I think we have narrowed it so I'm gonna have to grind a little bit away because the support the stainless support doesn't line up with the holes now it's just a tiny bit of sanding. We are going to have to paint a little bit again because I'm sanding away the paint. A little detour, but it shouldn't be too bad. I think we're going to finish this today, yeah? Yeah. We'll finish it today. Grinded a bit of weight off that bit over there, and now it fits in nicely. All those holes that are here, they are now nicely aligned with the holes in there. We're just going to paint the inside that I've just made a mess of, and then we should be able to install it. Great clouds are starting to show up, but we are not going to go home until that is in place. I do not care. We will stay and fight. The epoxy paint has dried. 
very nicely. It's uh, just started to rain a little bit, but that's not an issue because we've got this whole setup here. So what the plan is, we're going to put the support in place now. We're going to, of course, remove all this, put the support in place, put it all back down so we don't get rained on. Tape everything off, remove the support and all this stuff here. Put the Seeker Flex in place, put the support back and then fasten it down. That's the plan. That's the plan. see it's in place it's nicely fastened down with four uh, big lug screws however now we've got these two here which actually go all the way down which we can put a through bolt in so we're gonna do that right now someone downstairs someone upstairs with a nice counter nut underneath uh, I might even swap it later on for a counter plate that covers both of them and uh, with these four lug screws two through bolts and all that seeker I think this is gonna hold in place nicely also most of it is on the boat only a tiny bit is off the boat and uh, we're going to call this a day because I don't know how long this cover is actually going to protect us. It's starting to drip. At least it's not dripping on our work though. Let's finish this. I'm getting electrocuted, my hands are too wet. I think I'm not going to go in there anymore. Um, it is in place. We put one threaded bar because I want to have a bigger counter plate underneath. So I'm going to do that tomorrow, but I just wanted to put this one in so at least the seeker flex is like squeezed shut. Now, what, what is this? Done practically. It's just the details. Finish. Just the finishing details. So you need to cut that bit, that top bit off, put another through bolt and some bigger counter plates underneath, and then we're done. Okay, and uh, then we can start bringing the anchor up once MP figures out the 24 volt battery system. Hey! Hey, my part is done. Can we put that windlass on? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, and then, okay, I take that back. Then we need to take the get the anchor chain box ready which I've actually ordered already to get made except I guess I'll just have to wait but yeah anchor chain box and uh, and this is practically done I'm very excited to finally almost get the anchor up here we've got three which ones are we gonna end up using I've been reading a lot of your comments and what stood out is I don't need to wait to have the anti-fouling on in order to put that Garmin transducer in which is quite cool so I can already put that in also, we have 10 or 12 other things to fasten onto the hull under the waterline. Can you guess what they are? It's one of those things that or you're going to hate us for having it or you're going to love us for having it. Either way, we're going to have some other cool little things under, right under the waterline. And turns out, based on your comments, that I can also put them on before the anti-fouling. So I'm going to put them on and the transducer, tape them off. And then literally all I have to do is give the word to Tonino that we're ready for anti-fouling, which means we also need the exhaust tip, the through hole for the exhaust. And then he's gonna like say, all right, let's, get, let's pull that crib over here and put you on it. And then we'll paint the anti-fouling and launch. I think we're really, really, really getting there, like really fast. 
And uh, this week will be even faster even because the weather forecast promised me it was going to be nice weather. If not, we're still going to get launched very fast. Anyway, you know the drill. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Thanks for tuning in on our daily videos as well. It really means a lot to us. A lot of effort and a lot of little amounts of sleep goes into these videos, but it's really worth doing and it's making us work hard or at least do as much as possible because we know you guys are watching us every day. You know what I mean? We can't do nothing. So very, very massive thank you for watching and uh, don't forget to tune in tomorrow. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out, of course. And uh, a massive thank you from me and MP and uh, hasta mañana.